Well, ladies and gentlemen, as Adam said, it's not your money we're interested in. What we are interested in is your minds and your brains for the rest of your lives to think seriously about these existential and urgent problems about whether the world can continue to exist as it has or whether it's going to collapse in some kind of anarchy or destroy itself in nuclear war or anyhow go to the bad. We were founded, uh, or to be frank, we founded it in 1957 at a time when the Americans and the Russians were competing with one another in developing ever more horrifying weapons. First, old-fashioned atomic bombs like those which destroyed Hiroshima. Uh, then the thermonuclear weapons order of those, uh, greater than those by an order of magnitude hard to conceive. Then the development of intercontinental aircraft that could, break, that could drop these things. Then the development of intercontinental missiles that could send them and destroy one another and everything else in the process. In 1957, the British government decided to produce its own nuclear weapons and rely on those primarily for our survival. Uh, the general reaction was one of shock, horror and bewilderment. Uh, the cry came up, ban the bomb. The campaign for nuclear disarmament began its marches to Aldermaston. They were the people who were doing something about it. Now, banning the bomb was something which we all thought was highly desirable, but nobody quite knew how they were going to do it. Nobody had ever actually thought about the problems of nuclear war. Some, a group of highly distinguished scientists in the United States started publishing a little about it. Some of our scientists over here then got interested in it. There, a group of, um, which was drawn partly from scientists, partly from intelligent members of the armed forces, from, partly from politicians, partly and very interestingly from the churches, considering the appalling moral implications of using these things. But we agreed we knew nothing about it. We must learn. We must think. And we must learn how to think. And the Institute for Strategic Studies, as it then was, a purely English affair, poor, sorry, British affair, um, was started simply as an institute to provide information on this most vital question which faced mankind. Um, th we named our first um, periodical Survival, and it is still called Survival. It made a great deal of sense then to call it survival because it was what we were talking about. Possibly the urgency is less there now, but we felt we'd better hang on to the title just in case it did become relevant again. <laughs> um, we started with a little um, a group of offices in the Adelphi down the road, and that is why, if any of you noticed or wondered, our, our, our regular publications are called the Adelphi Papers. Um, we then moved to um, a slightly larger group of buildings north of the Strand um, in Covent Garden, uh, very agreeable, but slightly embarrassing because on one side we had a, 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 a theatre showing um, a, a, a comedy called No Sex, Please, We're, Bish, We're British, and on the other something saying the greatest little whorehouse in the West and to try to attract intelligent and distinguished people to come to such an establishment took a certain amount of doing. Um, you will notice that both those establishments, which we had before we moved here, were within easy walking distance of King's College London. Uh, and because, or partly because, at the same time, more or less, some of us at King's had had the same kind of idea and felt that it was highly desirable that we should develop at the undergraduate level thinking about international affairs and thinking about history and thinking about military affairs so that we could breed up a generation of people who are going to be intelligently informed and thinking about that. So are there anybody actually from, uh, from King's from the Department of War Studies here? Quite a lot. Good. You've made an excellent start in life. Keep, keep, keep it up. Um, and this um, 
combination between the undergraduate studies at King's and the further um, information, global, gl globally informed studies at the IISS um, have worked together in tandem ever since. Um, when I deserted King's to go to Oxford, I founded something called the Oxford University Strategic Studies Group. Anybody from that here? Good, well done. Nobody from Cambridge, I notice. <laughs> Never mind. Still plenty of time. So, um, we expanded, and the subject expanded. It became not simply a study of the problems of nuclear war, but the studies of international conflict, the study of the development of international rivalries and the extent to which they did set off war as such. And it became, the institute became global, it became comprehensive, and it became, I think, indispensable as a source for anybody interested in the conduct or the study of international relations. Now, now the nuclear weapons are still there. We tend to forget about them, but they're still there and they could still do the same amount of damage. But in addition to that, so much complexity has now been built into a national relations that they are only one dimension and by no means the most significant. Um, the whole nature of war is changing. War is no longer simply a matter between sovereign states. It is a matter in which non-state actors seem to be just as significant and in some ways even more, even, even more effective. Um, to engage in, with, in, with, in violent conflict with another group no longer requires a declaration of war. I don't know whether we're at war now or not. Has our commitment actually in the Middle East resulted in our being in a state of war or has it not? I don't know. It is by no means clear to lawyers whether, or, whether, whether it is or not. So what we are now is, is a world of violent politics in which we seem to move easily uh, or painfully from a condition of peace to a condition of conflict and back again. Now this is an enormously complicated, an enormous, quite unprecedented and very, very dangerous world indeed. Um, weapons have continued to develop ex uh, again, but in addition to weapons, we now have something in international conflict which introduces an important and new dimension as nuclear weapons did, and that is cyber war. Cyber war which makes it possible to inflict lethal damage on an adversary without actually, hurt it, without actually hitting them. To destroy the infrastructure of an entire society without anybody actually know who has done it. This is something which we are still grappling with in its, in its immensity. We don't know what effect this is going to have upon international relations or upon warfare, if you can still call it that. And that is only one of the elements in what is now this highly lethal mix into which you have grown up and which you are going to be taking responsibility for running one day. So you see why we want you here. You see why we want your minds and your brains to be thinking about these problems. All too few people have in the past, all too few, few people are now. And to have a group of people such as yourself who are prepared to start life thinking about these things, going on into, act, in, 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 into politics, into government, into responsible positions where you'll be grappling with them, or going into positions where you'll be teaching other people. So we're delighted to see you here. Please hang around. Please be only just one of the generations which we are bleeding up at the IISS to think about survival. Thank you.